Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, how should Conor McGregor be punished after attacking a bus at UFC Media Day? Plus, Eric Mangini joins the show to discuss the Patriots' interesting offseason moves. And is Tim Tebow going yard on the first pitch of his double-A season a big deal? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. We have to start with Conor McGregor. He was charged with three counts of misdemeanor assault and one count of felony criminal mischief after attacking a UFC bus in New York yesterday. Several fighters were injured in the incident, and the UFC lost three fights from tomorrow's event. Dana White called it, quote, the most disgusting thing that has ever happened in UFC history. Dana was on First Things First this morning and gave more details on the incident. Let's take a listen. This is the fight business, and leading up the week of a fight, there's tension and animosity. Guys are cutting weight. Um, they're angry. You know, these type of things happen. Guys will say things, push, shove, grab each other. These things have happened. Slap. People have slapped each other. People have done this. We can deal with all that stuff. When you bring in, you know, 20 hoodlums, they flew in from Ireland to basically do this. Connor and I talked through text yesterday. Um, probably the obvious worst conversation we've ever had. Um, but yeah, we talked yesterday before he turned himself Wait, in. Wait, worst conversation? Yeah, it was. Well, bad. you mean that he didn't understand what had happened? No, I, I don't believe he did. Or the severity I, well, it's not of what that, happened? It's not that I don't think he understood what happened. It just, he justified it. He had, it, it was justified to him that, uh, you know, listen, I'm sorry about Mike and I'm sorry about Rose and whoever else might have whatever, but this had to be done. Shannon, what do you make of it? This is a very bad look for the UFC. This is an even, even worse look for Conor McGregor, who's the, basically the face of the MMA, of, of the UFC. Skip, this is, this is thuggish. This is hooligan. This is hoodlum behavior. Mm. We see a lot of this soccer fans tearing up the stadium and they fighting each other, Skip. As Dana mentioned, he got on a plane and flew basically seven hours to do this. I get it. If you're in the fight, if you're fighting and you want to promote the fight, but the one thing that we know about Conor McGregor, Skip, is that he always goes over the line. With the Nate Diaz, he was throwing the water bottles. With he and Floyd Mayweather, they started getting into these racial and homophobic mm. slurs. Mm. And now this. Mm -hmm. He's doing this when he's not involved in a fight. Yep. Now, three fighters are not going to be able to fight tomorrow. Well, six fighters, because the three that they're going to fight, the three that were injured, yep. and their three opponents. So yep. now you got six guys missing out on a payday mm -hmm. because of this thuggish, because of this goonish behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, Skip, the UFC, and I understand that Conor McGregor is basically the face of the UFC, but they must send a swift and harsh, me harsh message. I don't believe he should be suspended for two years, five years, but they got to get him for at least six months. And I know coming up on, what, August, what November would be two years since he last fought. Mm -hmm. But you can't have this, Skip. This is a bad, bad message that they're allowing Conor McGregor to send. And I get it, he's a big deal. But you can't have this. And for him... Mm -hmm. Less than a year ago, he made a hundred million dollars. Mm -hmm. I understand he came from the mean streets of Ireland. Yep. He came up poor. He was on food stamps, but he fought in the UFC to move to remove himself to get his family out of that environment. And for a hundred million dollars, he's living in an ivory tower now. You resort to this? Mm. Come on, Connor, you gotta be bigger than this. Mm. This is why athletes that come from impoverished situations, mm -hmm. they fight and they do play sports or whatever they do to get out of that. Mm. So they don't have to, to carry out that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. And for him to go back and to do that because somebody disrespected his boy and then da you hear Dana saying that he justified it by saying someone basically disrespected his boy. Mm -hmm. Really, Connor? Mm -hmm. I mean, you could, I know if I'm one of them fighters, I ain't fighting no more in the UFC. I ain't going to get kicked upside my head. Mm. I just got me a big old check, Joy. Mm. I'm going to go and sit this thing on down, have you a couple kids. I'm going to be nice. No more punching for old Shea Sharp. Mm. Conor McGregor just, hey, I just got me a lot. This is the winning ticket right here. Conor McGregor just signed it for me. Mm. Justify it. You finished? Justify it. Shannon Sharp, you just got took by Conor McGregor. He did it again. It was brilliant. Maybe it went a little over the top, a oh, little Lord. over the edge. Maybe he, I'm sure he didn't mean to, shatter the windshield in such a way that it would lacerate one fighter's face and get some little shards of glass in the other fighter's mm. eye and cancel two fights. 
This was nothing in the end but Don King Memorial fight hype building to a crescendo. McGregor Mayweather 2, which will take place in the octagon under MMA rules. That's what just happened. No. It was beautiful. It was brilliant. And I'm sure Dana, as we just saw, Dana's very upset. He's genuinely upset about this because it became a bad look because it just went a little far. But there is method to Dana's madness because he knows what, what made $100 million for Conor McGregor the first time in the boxing ring and, what, $300 million for Floyd? Mm -hmm. will make 300 for Conor McGregor this time in the octagon and God knows how much for Floyd Mayweather, money Mayweather, in the octagon, because it, it could be 600 million, 800 million, God knows how many million, because this will be the biggest fight, the richest fight in the history of this planet, and it's going to take place in the octagon, and Dana keeps warning you, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm Man. telling you, I'm telling you. So, back to your original point, is, is Conor McGregor basically just a street thug. Yeah, all those terms you used, it's, mm -hmm. they, they call them yabos over mm -hmm. there, hooligans, whatever yeah. you want to call them. Yeah. Did, did he grow up that way? You, you better believe it. And I'm going to remind you, it was just five years ago that Conor McGregor in Dublin, Ireland, was collecting welfare checks mm -hmm. as a product of that neighborhood called Crumlin, which is actually just a south side suburb of Dublin. And, and it has... Uh, seen some of the worst gang fighting in the history of Ireland, and he grew up in those gang fights. And I will remind you, just five months ago, Conor McGregor was bold enough in a pub one night, after I'm sure he'd had a few too many, he was guilty of punching a known mafia member in the face, an older man who was the father of a son. It's a long story. It's another one of those. I'm going to get even with mm -hmm. you. And uh, reportedly, ESPN reported there's been a bounty on Connor's head by the Irish mafia, the Irish mob, for the last five months. So he lives in this world. So is he capable of bringing what a... They have no mob head on the skip. Yeah. You know how the mob work. When they send for you, they come get you. Well, so they ain't supposedly got they're trying to strong arm him into paying for protection from the mob. And I don't know if he actually paid or not, but he had to up his bodyguard number around him. And so that's been going on. So is he capable of the kind of, what did Dana call it, 20 hoodlums with him? That mm -hmm. kind of retaliation? Yeah. But back to your original point. Reportedly, and I, saw, I watched the video of it this morning, there's this confrontation between his teammate and uh, Nurma, Nurma, I'll call him Abib. I can't pronounce <laughs> Khabib, his last I can't name. Either. I think it's Nurmagomedov. I think I got that right. <laughs> it's Abib. But there was a confrontation. And I, go watch the whole video, I dare you, because because I don't even see there's supposedly a slap, but I, I can't I, see a slap in I the video. Either. So they're going back and forth, and a lot, they're both Russian, and I don't understand, but then I tried to read a transcript of it. And there were the basic insults that you've been a part of your whole life, <laughs> and it goes back and forth. And I'm not sure that that reached the depths that would ignite Conor McGregor to do what you said and get on a plane and fly, whatever it is, seven hours from Dublin. Six hours and 40 minutes, to be exact. Hmm. Is it? With no delays. I, I looked it up, and it was seven and a half, so maybe I, I looked at a slower plane. Well, he's on, pri he's on private. Private? Maybe <laughs> yeah. the private would do it, okay? But then, if, if you're really going to get even with Habib, wouldn't you go find him in the hotel or wouldn't you do it quietly? Wouldn't you just go take care of business yeah. instead of going to the media day at the Barclays Center ahead of UFC 223? Wouldn't you do it quietly if, if, if in fact, that was your goal, to shut him up, to take care of him? Wouldn't you do it somewhere besides at the media availability? Uh, uh but Skip, what did he think was going to happen if you pick up a dolly and throw it through a window when people's on the bus? You're talking about he didn't mean for that to happen. What a, do we... a, a, an explosion, a nuclear explosion of publicity <laughs> is going to happen because you know with cell phone cameras, it's going to get videotaped. There are all kinds of security cameras everywhere. You knew exactly what you were doing, even if it did obviously go a little far. But he's just, it's like pro wrestling. I mean, you're going to throw things at, at the windshield and you, you don't, intend to hurt anybody in the bus, but you want to do some damage to the bus. But intent only matters to the individual that's throwing it. Mm -hmm. The guy's just as injured. Remember, intent only matters to yeah. the guy, to the defendant. 
Yep. The victim is just as in, uh, mm -hmm. injured whether you intended to harm yep. him or not. But, Skip, my thing is, if you got this much animosity towards Khabib, as Dana said, the next, what is it, 226, this one, so 227, 223. 223. Yeah. So 224, 225, Conor mm -hmm. McGregor and Khabib. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can... That's the thing about the fight game, Skip. If I dislike you, guess what? We can settle it. We can go and get up in the ring, UFC rules. You're going to get... But see, here's the thing, Skip. Conor McGregor is dragging his feet about fighting. Skip, once you make $100 million, it's hard for you to go back to making 10 and 13. I agree. E even though 13 and 13 million, that's a lot of money, Skip. But once you got the big check and they got all them zeros, how does Conor McGregor say, hold on, wait a minute. I'm the cash cow. And I'm sure Dana's trying to make it worth his while. He, hey, I got 15, 20. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. No. But, Skip, this kind of behavior is unacceptable. I can imagine. Joy, what would have happened if that would have been uh, Demetrius Johnson or Tyron Woodley? What would have been said? Nobody would have said, oh, that's, that's a, what you call them. That's a PR move. They tried to hype a fight. Come on, Skip. This is unacceptable for this man. You know he goes over the line. And I told you that. You can trash talk. But then he, he is not good enough to question somebody, well, I can beat you or, or, or question how tall he is and little legs, little torso. He got to go over. He got to go to the monkey. He got to go to making homophobic slur. I mean, he just, it's just never enough. Did you buy it? Did you watch? Were you not hyped for it? Because I was. No, I wasn't hyped. Yeah, I was. Say that thuggish uh, behavior. Yeah. See, he mess, see, you know what? He got you. No. Nah. got you. He going to mess around and get the right one, and they're going to spray all him. They're going to spray them all. Okay. That could happen. And then that what? Could happen. All right. He's lived in that world his whole life. And then what? He doesn't care because I'm pretty sure he's not going to fight in, in any sort of UFC until Floyd walks into the octagon. Man, he ain't going to fight and no so, Floyd. So Connor's got two fights left in him. One was in a boxing ring. And one's going to be in the octagon against Floyd. That's what's going to happen. And he's going to make 300 more, and that'll be 400 million. And he's going to say, Shannon, you know what you can do with all of your opinions, No, he right? is, no, yeah. it's just like Floyd. The yeah. more you see, some people can never have enough of money, and he's one of those. Floyd seems to be one of those guys. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't enough for Floyd to make 225, mm -hmm. make three, so five, half a billion dollars in his two, three of his. Uh, Three last fights, so he made what thirty million against Berto, two twenty-five against Pacquiao, mm -hmm. three hundred million. So it wasn't it wasn't enough, Skip, to do five seventy-five, mm -hmm. be fifty and zero, ride off in the sunset. I'm cool, unbeaten, untied. A lot of people tried, nobody did it. That's much, not enough. How much can Conor make for fighting Habib? Let's just say hypothetically. Oh, he can make a lot, but Dana trying to Dana trying to squeeze him. Well, that's that's. He, he, he'll make what Dana <laughs> allows him to make, yeah, right? exactly. He's still under contract at right. UFC. And he said so, he, won't po he won't percentage points. He, won't, okay. he wants a piece of UFC. Okay. So you don't think that Dana White and others who own the UFC, Dana obviously operates it. Right. But you don't think they would love to see a floyd Connor match rematch in the octagon? Of course. You don't think they'd, they'd benefit from that hugely? Yeah, but they won't give $100 of my money. Mm -hmm. yes, I ain't paying no, they will. no oh, they won't. Please. Oh, no, no, Oh, no, stop no, it. No, no. What? No. You get none of my money for that. Because I already you know how it's going to end. Like I'm crazy. not watching. I'm going huh? to the movies that night. You're going you to are the movies? not. I'm going to. I'm going bowling. You're going to. No, watch... I know what you do. You'll you'll show up at a yeah. at a watch party yeah. and bring one of the free bottles of Hennessy that someone no. has brought yeah. you. No, yeah. I, I ain't watching it. You're going to watch. Watch, uh, yes, you watch you what? Sister Act Two. That no. Night? <laughs> yeah. I mean, why would, why would I watch a wildebeest go fight a crocodile or a lion? Mm. We know how that's going to end. Wildebeest sounds pretty bad to me. It yeah, it's like out. Real, man, yeah, right? don't, don't do that, Skip. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> See, Skip, yeah. you look at that smirk on your yeah. face. You want Connor yeah. to get his retribution I do. for what he did. But so does everybody else. And now millions of people around the globe are going to want Connor to get his from Floyd for what he just did to two of the UFC no, fighters. No, you they, watch. no. Khabib going to take care of that. Yeah. Khabib going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Connor didn't care about him. Yeah, that's right. You really think he took this that seriously? Khabib to fly got fly six and a half hours. He no. lucky. Khabib, he luck, Connor lucky. Khabib didn't slap him. Oh well, he probably is, but he he doesn't want any of that. I he know he don't want none of Khabib. Risk is pretty face for that. He Not, wants Floyd. No, 
Oh. No. He's got yeah. Floyd. He wants the biggest You know fish. what? Next pay period, I'm going to give you $1,000. So you can lead this fight along. Floyd Sr., I'm going to give you the $1,000 back from Floyd Sr. It's not about the it. money. It's, ab yeah. it's about the principle. No, it ain't no principle. principle. And There's the principle no principalities was, I, in this. I wrote a personal check to Floyd Mayweather Sr. Well, for $1,000. Well, I'm going to write you a personal check to one Skip Bayless mm -hmm. for $1,000. Okay, I don't think you'll do that, but I will. thank you. Yeah. I want you to stop trying to promote this Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather in the UFC. Because, Skip, you don't... The only reason, if you thought it would be a good fight, you wouldn't want to see it because Khabib and Conor McGregor is more in line. That would be a good fight. You want to see Floyd get pummeled. You just want to see him lose. I just want to see the, the matchup. It, it's like... Turn, it ain't no matchup. Turn about his fair play. Conor had the guts to go into the ring with Floyd. Right? Yeah. He lasted 10 rounds, and he finally did get Yeah, pummeled. we let him last. But in round nine, he had Floyd in trouble low, in the corner low, until low. that referee, low, Dirty low. Bird, stepped in. Low blow, Skip. Up, low blow. Yeah, it Start was. Start over in the middle yeah, of the ring. Right. What? Yeah, that's you what You let happened. him out of the trap. There wasn't no trap. You hit, yeah. him, hit him low. Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? There, there could be even a, a trilogy here where the third fight between Manning! these two would be back in the ring. First it of could all, be. first of all, it could be. First of all, let's get this straight. If Floyd lasts through the second fight. You and I both know yeah. there will be no third. Yeah. Yeah. If Floyd were to get into the octagon mm. with Conor McGregor, there is no third. There's no third boxing match. Mm. There's no third UFC fight. There's no third anything. You know that, Skip. Mm -hmm. And the only reason you want this to happen is that you want to see someone. You want to say in your lifetime, you saw Floyd Mayweather get beat. And it's not going to happen. How many billions of people would want to say that and pay for this fight? I don't care. Way more than paid for the boxing match. I don't a lot of people care. thought the boxing match was a joke, but this would be for blood in the octagon with little tiny gloves on his little brittle hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. So if he got little yeah. brittle hands, yeah. he's never kicked anybody, yeah. he's never need anyone, this he's is never fascinating. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see how long he lasts, because that would be the question. How long will he last before he gets hurt by Conor yeah. McGregor? The, yeah. Just because you're a great athlete in mm -hmm. one sport. I mean, Tom Brady is a, great, is a great football player. Nobody wants to see Tom Brady on the basketball court. Nobody wants to see Tom Brady on the, on the baseball diamond. Nobody this is wants close to see enough. That. This no. is hand-to-hand -hand combat. Skip. Boxing ring, octagon. Slightly different rules over here in the octagon. You can kick. You in can boxing, wrestle. the only thing you can use are your hands. In the UFC, every th the only thing you can't do, you can't bite, you can't eye gouge, and you can't hit the guy in the private. That's the same thing in the U in, mm -hmm. in boxing. Okay. But elbows, knees, feet. You can Good. take the guy down. You can't wrestle in boxing. So yep. the greatest defensive fighter ever. We'll have a challenge here. It's How e does he stay out of harm's way? Yeah. It's easy to be a defensive specialist yeah. when all you have to worry about is someone's hands. Mm. When you got to worry about someone's feet, mm. they knee, a hammer fist. Mm -hmm. uh, stop it. Skip. Floyd, Floyd's special now. In it's the rare. boxing ring. Rare. In the boxing ring. Yeah. But you saw, even in that fight against Conor McGregor, you see some of Floyd's skills are deteriorating. Mm. This is why Floyd doesn't want to get into really? the boxing ring. Shannon Sharp just said his skills are deteriorating? The man's wow. 41. He's wow. about to be 42, yes. Tom Brady's 40, and he just won MVP of the National Football League. But he took that L. Yeah. I won't remember that MVP, yeah. but I remember that L. When he <laughs> set the record for passing yards hey, what in he any get playoff game? What did he get him? Bill the... Belichick got him an L. No, 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 don't do that. Well, it just what happened. Don't skip. So, l l before we leave this alone, well, uh, obviously, Connor turned himself in to the police yeah. in New York City. <clears throat> so, will he go to jail for this? I doubt it, but I don't know that for a fact. Could he go to? He could go to jail. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's been charged with assault and criminal mischief. But as a first-time offender here, I don't know that he's got. No, nah, we gonna check his records over there. He got. He got. He got anything over there in Ireland? I don't think so. No, nothing that I could find before the show. So, I don't know. Would he go? Could he go to jail? But, but help me out here. <laughs> Yeah. What happened to some of the greatest rappers we've known after they went to jail? What happened to Tupac after he went to jail? Did it help his career or hurt his career? It helped his career. What happened to Lil Wayne after he went to jail? Help or hurt? Help. But here's the thing. Gucci Mane. Listen, I could go down. I could just go on and on. Stop talking about Gucci. They're, my, well, they're, well, I'm just they're saying, from the crib. They went to jail, and then what happened? Ain't no rapper from Oklahoma, uh, no, especially any no, of the out of No, except me. I'm you ain't no one. rapper. I'm the only one. Oh, so what are you? Yeah. Skip's got bars. Yeah. <laughs> So, MC Skill Milk. Yeah, 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 you got it. Yeah. <laughs>
So, but, but I'm saying this is a beautiful, it's brilliant. Again, did it go to, I don't want to see people get hurt, and I don't think he wanted, I don't think he intended to hurt anybody. Skip, if you throw a dolly through a window. Okay, but people, you don't even know it's going to go through the window. If you... You don't know that. If Skip, Skip, you know what this reminds you of? Those kids that drop those boulders, they over over the overpass and the cars coming up underneath. Well, I didn't know it was going to hurt. What you think is going to happen if you drop a rock from 20 feet up in the air on a speeding car? Mm. If you throw a dolly through the window of a bus and people well, are on that bus. I didn't used to know if you drop a penny off the Empire State Building, it could kill somebody by the time it hit the ground. It took Skip, me a long it's a time thousand to get feet up in head. the air. Well, I, I just couldn't process that. When I was a little kid, I was like, really? Yeah, because you, well, look, when the tallest building is, is one story in Oklahoma, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you obviously, I mean, but, but when you're a thousand feet up in the air, yeah, Skip, that's it. a whole different ball game. Okay, I got it. But Connor probably didn't process all that. He just, I, he probably didn't have a plan until he saw a folding chair and a dolly. And I'm just going to hit the, I'll hit the windshield. And it just implodes. Yeah. Okay. Khabib, get him. I'm a Khabib fan now. Y you realize. Hook, line, and sinker. You just went right in. Yeah. Yep. And you know what he got on that yeah. on the other end? Yeah. He got old Khabib. Yeah, yeah he got old Khabib. He cares. I care. He cares. I'm going to watch that fight. Care. Khabib. Yeah. Khabib. He Khabib. <laughs> Khabib. I might even be raving the Russian flag for Khabib. Yeah, well. Eh. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm against Connor right now. I, I, I like really Connor. Guess I like Connor, mm -hmm. but not he he going too far this now. This doesn't this doesn't smell at all like promotion for No. Come, <laughs> Khabib will put some emotion on sniff. it. No. Just a little bit? No. That's all right, Khabib. Well, I, I smell... I smell what Khabib, Khabib got cooking for him. I smell Don <laughs> a butt cut. Memorial. I bet, I bet Khabib got something for him. Mm. Khabib. Nobody cares about Khabib. Yeah, they, they will. He, when he got... When he got that win, that yeah, dub, yeah. I'm going to have that restaurant now, open later. Nothing about this should be surprising to anyone. What do you always say? Money doesn't change people? It, it shouldn't. And make you a bigger, more than what? So he a bigger hoodlum, huh? He's a bigger hoodlum. <laughs> That's true. No mercy. Hey guys, Joy Taylor here. Before we get back to the Undisputed podcast, I want to tell you about Toyo Tires. UFC fighters are tough. You know what else is tough? Toyo Tires. That's why Toyo has been a proud sponsor of the UFC. Just like UFC fighters, Toyo Tires are built for battle. It's an all or nothing philosophy. Durability, aggressive design, on- and off-road capabilities, yes to all of them. Living life on the highway? Toyo has you covered. Spending some serious time off-road? They have a tire for that, too. No matter what you drive, Toyo has what you need, and frankly, these tires just look cool. Trust me, nothing ruins your day faster than being stranded on the side of the road with a flat tire. Any vehicle, every terrain, all or nothing. The next time you need tires, ask for Toyo. To experience more, visit toyotires.com backslash UFC. That's T-O-Y-O tires.com backslash UFC. Now let's get back to the show. No mercy. Ty Lue was back on the sideline for the Cavs last night, and he had a front row seat for their huge comeback win against the Wizards. The Cavs were down 17 late in the game, but LeBron scored 13 of his 33 points in the fourth to lead the comeback. He also finished with 14 assists, including a pass to Kyle Korver for a game-tying three-pointer with just over a minute left. The Cavs have now won five straight. Let's take a listen to LeBron on the comeback win. I don't have a quick uh, bone in me, you know, so if I'm on the floor, I got to try to make plays happen no matter what the score is, and, you know, it's just my mindset. I've just been in a groove. It's been a while. It's been a long, long, long groove, <laughs> and uh, I plan on staying here, hopefully, so, you know, I just got to keep my body, keep my mind fresh, you know, keep working on my craft every day, and uh, see what happens. We're joined by FS1 NBA analyst Eddie House. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning Eddie. He, he was. He is grooving. Here we go. Here we go. Check your groove. <laughs> <laughs> Check your groove. <laughs> yeah. Work yeah, yeah. Hard. Don't sing it or we'll have to pay for <laughs> okay. it. Eddie, how impressive was LeBron last night? Ooh -wee. Ooh -wee. I mean, I mean, come on. Unbelievable. Come on. Unbelievable. I mean, he assisted or scored on half of their points. Mm. He put the team on. They, they down 17. He put the team on his mm. back. On his back. Mm. He's... Like yesterday, we was talking about Philly don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. Just, you can't game plan for that. And once he start rolling and, and he in mm. his groove, once he mm. gets to working hard and playing hard, yeah. guess what happens? Everybody starts sinking and mm. looking at and he's finding them shooters and they knocking down shots. If they mm. knocking down shots, they tough. Yep. Another 13-point perform, three-point mm. performance by the team. Yep. They're shooting the three ball well. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything with him in the paint. Mm -mm. He's knocking down shots. 
he could get his free throws a little better. I don't oh, want to poke holes oh, in nothing. Oh, but he did enough. That under the car. No, no, he did enough to win the game. Do you see what he did in the first quarter? 10 points, 5 assists, uh, and accounted for 22. Mm -hmm. Second quarter, 4 points, 2 assists, accounted for 10 of their 20. That's Eddie got still researched. Today. Yeah, 6 points for thir uh, on, and 3 assists, account for 13. Mm -hmm. And in the fourth quarter, 13 points, 4 assists, accounted for 22. Mm. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Skip. Where are we Come going? Come on, Give now. me due, Skip. Yeah. Give me due. You got to give him some credit. Give me due. You got to give him some credit. Diet Mountain Dew? No. No, no, no. He won't credit. Some credit. Yeah. Yeah. And I ain't talking about no FICO score either. I'm talking about that good stuff. So, you want me to go? Yeah, I want you to go. go. <laughs> so, Mr. House, how did the Cleveland Cavaliers suddenly start climbing back in this game? What happened? The Beast of the East. Is he up there? Yeah, he's yeah, up there. Yeah, there you go. The Beast of the East finally said, you know what? Nobody on those, those five guys can keep me from getting to that rim, right? Nobody in the world. Driving layup, driving layup, driving layup, driving layup. And pass, one. Pass the dunk. And one. Pass the uh, wow. uh, green for the dunk. So, so I always wonder. I wonder out loud. I tweeted this right after the game. I always wonder, why didn't LeBron just do that the whole game? I realized he was down two point guards, so he had to sort of play point guard. But, but again... Do the Wizards have anybody who can keep him from the the cup, as they call it? No, nobody, nobody can. does. Nobody, nobody, can. nobody does. Though. The Sixers have two giants in the middle who can really defend at the highest level. That has turned into the best defensive team in basketball. They bother LeBron because he can't do that to both of those guys. That, and you saw what happened at Cleveland on March 1st. Who won that game? The Sixers won it and won it convincingly over LeBron post-trade deadline. What did, what did LeBron do to them when they had Embiid in Philly? Triple-double, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And early in the year, yeah. beat They're both. just growing up, though. The babies are coming of age. Well, they won't, they yeah. won't be full-grown yeah. this year. You, you know what? This Philly team, just a quick aside here, it's starting to remind me of a Dallas Cowboy team I covered in 1992 that nobody thought was there yet because they're just babies, Troy and Emmett and Michael. They're just kids. You know, they don't get it yet. They acquired tr uh, Charles Haley. And all of a sudden, they broke through a whole year ahead of schedule. And what happened? They won the Super Bowl. So I'm just saying, the Sixer team's starting to look like that. A world Cowboys champion? Team. The Sixers looking like a world no, no, champion. They're, they're starting to that They got that's so much said. firepower what? and talent that's just on the verge. It's... Oh, of world there. championship? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. It's Ooh, looking it's starting to feel like it. Yeah. Joel Embiid is not afraid of the beast of the East. <laughs> Joel is about to become the beast of the East if he isn't already. Yeah, when LeBron, when LeBron is like in year 18, okay. we'll pass that along to Joel Embiid if, you, if, if we deem him necessary. Okay. If not, we'll put foots on their neck again. So, once again, we get the best player on the planet, the according to him, MVP of this league yeah. this year. Yeah. We get him on the free throw line with 53 seconds left, and predictably what happens? He's got two free throws to tie the game. And Eddie House, what's at, what happens with the first free throw? He almost airballs it crank, to the crank. left. It wasn't even a clank. It was like a tick, tick. It barely ticked the edge of the rim on the left side. I'm like, come on, LeBron. You can at least get it up on top. Then he made the next one. He made the next one. I give him credit. He's been shooting a little better from the free throw line. But then what happened with 24 seconds left? LeBron goes up from three to shoot for the lead and LeBricks it. And long rebound out. It reminded me of game six, Miami 2013. Long rebound to Chris Bosh. No, this time it was to Jeff Green, who fights for the rebound, and they call a foul Ball. on the Wizards. They call a foul. It's like sort of a one of those 50-50 balls with, with how much time, 24 seconds left in the game. Usually the refs just say fight for it. No, just go he fight. Did. Am I right, Eddie? He Allen? got it. Depending. Fight for it. Jeff Green had a little bit more aggression, so he got the call. He got, okay. the, he got, he got the, call. the call. He got the okay. call. So they send Jeff Green to the free throw line, and what does he do? Swish, swish. Eddie. If you don't mind me asking, who's a better free throw shooter, James Harden or LeBron James? Oh, don't change that. It's James. my turn. Well, well, hold on just a second. Joy, it's James my Harden. turn. I haven't finished yet. You, <laughs> you relinquish the floor to me. So then we get down to nine seconds left, and LeBron James has a chance to at least ensure overtime by making two free throws. And what does he do? He misses the first one. So it's still a two-point game, and John Wall comes the other way. And, boy, did the Wizards ever hit the wall down the stretch in the last two minutes because I don't like John Wall. I never have liked him. I like him personally. He gets upset with me. This isn't personal. It's professional. But this was vintage John Wall. I know he's been hurt for Who's a while. Gardening? Yeah, Eddie, who was guarding yeah. him? Did he get two open shots? Who was guarding him? Yeah, and then nobody. LeBron was guarding him on the last play of the that, game when it's a two-point game, and he just turns because he didn't have anywhere to go. He gets caught up in the air with, I don't know what I'm going to do with this ball. Good defense. I think I'm going to throw it to Jetty. I'll throw it to Jetty. You pulled a Freddie Brown? He was a Freddie Brown. I'll throw it to Jetty. 
And guess what Jetty does? Just to ice the game, to put it to four and put it out of reach so that they, they can't shoot a three to tie. What did Jetty do? He went to the free throw line and made both of them. He did, Skip. As opposed to And LeBron I commend James. him on that. Yep. But what about the fact that they were down 14? It was they good. were down at 1.17. And with under eight minutes, yep. LeBron James scores 13. Yep. Four assists. So 22 of the he 37 did. points they yep. score. You know, through the middle Put of the fourth quarter, he's really good. He was good in that game six, 2013, down to the three-minute mark. And then, boy, he starts to get okay, nervous what handed. Well, can you, okay, let's, yep. let's just say for the sake of argument, I'm going to agree. Can you tell the people at home what happened in overtime? Overtime, he took over because my Spurs got shot you, in you the see, heart. You see, by that? Ray Allen. Hey, you see what happened? Leave that out. Yeah, he. he, he Skip, why you? Why do you think that? Everybody, amnesia, right? did you see my team? It just died. It why? It literally just fell the on game the game wasn't over. The you game got five was minutes over. to get it back. Ray Allen made the greatest clutch it, shot in history. My team was up five with 23 seconds left. My San Antonio Spurs. And Manu missed a free throw, and Kawhi, a baby at that point, missed a Oh, he a baby. Yeah, oh, a baby. now Kawhi, a baby. Yeah. Now oh. he's just a big baby. Uh, don't, do that, don't do that, Skip. Don't do that, Skip. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But, Skip, last night he was sensational. He was in that toolbox. They needed everything that he gave. Remember yeah. now, he played another 39 The toolbox has the biggest hammer in it in the NBA. Yeah. Just take it to the rack, man. Okay. They can't keep. But they don't. They don't call. They don't call fouls for us like it, they do. It doesn't James matter. Hart. He just bully balls. But a lot of that. Play still, bully a, lot, a lot of that. He didn't need the hammer. Huh. Sometimes he had to have that electric tape. So he had to piece that thing together, hold it together. Oh yeah. What did Ty Lue say? Ty Lue say he had a conversation with LeBron, and he said, "You take some time. Mm -hmm. I hold it down while you gone." Oh, okay. That's what he said. I admire Ty Lue on his first night back. Somehow talking LeBron into sitting for the first what four and a half minutes. He of needed the, a break of the fourth quarter. He doesn't usually do that, do and it benefited this team greatly because when he came back in, he was fresh. Well, he did. The only, let me tell you what Brown thinking was: if I sit on the bench, there's a great chance we're going to be down even more. You know, the greater the challenge, the greater the conquest. Mm -hmm. So he realizes that if I come back in, we down by 14 under eight minutes, and I pull this off. You, you know what? I saw a stat on ESPN this morning that I just wasn't aware of. Do you realize that LeBron in his career with his team down 15-plus with six or fewer minutes left in the game, he's 0 and 152 until last night? He'd yeah. never won a game like that. Mm -hmm. He was 0 and 152, and mm -hmm. I'm thinking the best player on the planet had never pulled off a comeback like that? Yeah. I don't know this, but I'm sure Michael Jordan had several of those. Well, Although, I, you know, the more I, I think about it, maybe Michael would never be down. You soon. know what I do know? Did the ESPN have that stat in there? The greatest comeback in playoff history was led by LeBron James against the Indiana Pacers last uh, year. That's, where is that stat at? Wait, who was the leader of last year's Pacers? George Paul. Paul, George, George, George Paul was. <laughs> George Paul. <laughs> yeah. Paul are the Pacers <laughs> mentally tougher this year than they were last year? Did you see what they did to Golden State last night? They swept them this year because what? they don't have George Paul in, in the center. Stop of it, Skip. Well, I'm serious. What about? Well, well, hold on. You mean to tell me Golden State got swept yep. and they got the best player on the yep. planet on their team? Yep. He was Kevin Durant. two for ten. He had a terrible night. What? Shot it poorly. What? Bogdanovich made six for Indiana. The best player Indiana on the team. You know he make excuses. You I'm not that? making yeah, excuses. I, I just said excuses. he had a terrible he, night. He glossed over the fact when Manu Ginobili missed a free, just glossed over that. I Kawhi, didn't gloss over it. Free. He missed oh, he it. Was I a baby. said it. I brought it up. Uh, uh, but you gloss I over brought, it. I you don't make it like it's a big thing. It was that terrible. If either one of those free Let's talk about how good LeBron, how great he was at. What about his passing skills? All his passes on the money. He threw yeah. one, and it got it's so much velocity on it. He threw it, and Mark, uh, Morris hit it with his finger, yeah. and it still was right on the money. I, I mean, his vision is it, impeccable. It, it, the same LeBron who had six turnovers. They were just oh yeah. So look, oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. We talking about no, we talking about uh, plus minus, yeah. right? Well, Rodney about... Hood is 21. I know that would. LeBron is 13. Uh -huh. If you don't knock it off, this man almost had a triple double and. Rodney it's Hood just, had it's science. Two, it's come on, science. three it's for six. Ain't no science. <laughs> Wait a minute. Eight points. Yeah, nobody he had saying. eight points, the, the, and he plus 21. He had eight points. Okay, this, this is man had 33, 14, and nine. Like plus minus is subjective. That's a, it's that's it's a completely science. Stat. It's not a garbage, it's a garbage stat. Garbage it means stat. when you're on the floor, what's the score? And when Rodney it's Hood was who, on the floor, who you have with you on there? Plus, what were they? He's plus. Come on, plus 21, Rodney Hood. Plus 21. And LeBron is plus 13. Whole... Come on, stop it. Okay, no, LeBron means... led the whole game, right? Yeah. Okay. No, when he LeBron put the team was on, on the back. floor, the team was plus 13. That's just well, science. Up, they were damn right. 17. Well, hold on. Well, let me ask you a question. Huh? Well, he should have been plus more than that. 
Why? Because when he came back, they were down 14. And that's he brought all You think all they made this up? Do you yeah. think it's like it's yeah. a, it's that's a why it's a, box? It's a dumb stat. It's that's not what a I'm dumb trying to, stat. That's so yeah. stupid. It's yeah. not a Don't worry about 13. it. And, and we got that dub. We're going to get another one tonight. By the way, LeBron said he's been in a long, long, long groove. He had three longs ahead of groove. And yet, I go back to Christmas Day of just this season 15. for the next 19 games. LeBron had the worst plus years. minus in no, basketball. Come on, get the plus minus out of here, man. The worst please. plus minus in all of basketball <laughs> was LeBron here. James. Look at 520 that's players. That's why I don't hold no work. stock in this. Come on, man. You tell me Rodney Hood plus 21 compared to LeBron James plus 30. Okay. He had more of an impact okay, on that it game. Okay, doesn't mean he's better than LeBron. That's it just means when he was on the floor, the team was 21 points better. Man, that's then the, the opponent. It, it's just, it, it it's depends just on your math. teammates too. It depends on your teammates. It does. Who you're out there with? Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. But it's a stat. It's my real. Guy was, my guy was when in he his, was out there. My guy was, was in that going to work box last night. Yeah. Yeah. He pulled that hammer out. Yeah. No. No. Seven minutes left. He pulled Phillip that hammer out. Head, I'm going to hit the top right on Let the head. Tape. Yeah. 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 Monkey wrench. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that big it sledgehammer. It's like the world's strongest man. 40. And you hit Gortat right on the head with it, whoa, whoa. and he just shrinks. Don't do that, Skip. He did. Don't do that. Did he not? Why are you do that? I'm just telling you what happened. Everybody, now, everybody, what happened everybody last Everybody's scared night. when they play LeBron. They are. Most teams are, except for the Sixers. They are not afraid of no LeBron. Man, they have no no chance. Against zero. Cleveland. Huh? What can you, zero? Can't get, you can't game plan for him. Well, okay. What's less than zero? You can't Who game won plan March 1st at in the King's house. Who won? It's about to be 3-1. Okay. Well, the playoffs are different. No mercy. The Patriots have made some major changes to their roster this offseason. Earlier this week, they traded Brandon Cooks to the Rams for the 23rd overall pick in the draft. They've also lost Malcolm Butler, Deion Lewis, Danny Amendola, and Nate Solder. They did make an addition yesterday, signing former Bills wide receiver Jordan Matthews. Mm. We're joined by former NFL mm. head coach Eric Mangini. Welcome back, Eric. Good morning. Good to be back. It's good How to see you, you guys. It's been a while. Where, where's your stand-up partner? Uh, he's, in, <laughs> he's in the green room. They didn't, they didn't want to bring him out with me. He's referring to Rob <laughs> Parker, <laughs> who will be joining us Beat him up bit. on a Friday, going to the weekend, yeah. and recover. <laughs> Skip, we'll start with you. Are yes. the Patriots taking a step back this offseason? Coach Mangini, you obviously know Bill Belichick very well. You coached under him, worked with him for number of years. You've had your issues with them. I have now a big issue with them. You're probably going to tell me I'm out of my mind, but I'm going to throw all of this at you and you okay. react to this, please. I do not any longer trust Bill Belichick's motives when it comes to Tom Brady because Bill Belichick clearly wanted Tom Brady out after last season. According to the ESPN report, Bill Belichick was ordered by Robert Kraft to trade Jimmy Garoppolo, Belichick's diamond in the rough from the second round, who was right on schedule to take over this football team as the starting quarterback this coming football season. And Bill Belichick said, OK, watch this. This is my take on it. And he gave away Jimmy Garoppolo for a, a second round draft choice. He just got, which was the point you made yesterday, he got, for Brandon Cooks, he got a late first, right? Yep. So he gave away Jimmy Garoppolo, and we saw what Jimmy did down the stretch for the 49ers. He was pretty great, mm -hmm. right? So then what happened? After the AFC Championship game in which Tom Brady had once again pulled off a miraculous fourth quarter drive against the coming of age Jacksonville, Saxonville defense, Bill Belichick openly scoffed at the deep gash on Tom Brady's throwing hand. So did my partner across the table. But this was Bill Belichick, who called it not exactly open heart surgery and more media circus than football crisis. And Tom Brady, in the final episode of Tom vs. Time, displayed for all to see the deep gash that took 12 stitches to close on the base of his thumb on his throwing hand. And I think you would agree, that can make it pretty difficult to throw a football in the cold against the Saxonville defense, right? So, then what happened in the Super Bowl? All of a sudden, Tom Brady throws for a playoff record 505 yards, but Bill Belichick's genius defense is without Malcolm Butler because nobody seems to really know. Malcolm Butler doesn't know because he stands on the sideline for every defensive snap, plays none after he led the defense with 98% of the snaps during the regular season. What? There's no Malcolm Butler, and you let Nick Foles, the backup quarterback, hang 41 points on you, Bill Belichick, on your defense, which leads us to now you trade away Tom's only deep threat, Brandon Cooks, 
fine. What are you going to do? Are you going to help out? Are you, you going to give, him, give Tom some a deep threat for next year? So you go get Jordan Matthews. And I love Jordan Matthews personally because he went to my school, Vanderbilt. And he set the SEC career record for catches and receiving yards. But in Philadelphia, he did nothing but drop too many passes. <laughs> and in Buffalo, he had not one. He had three different injuries that cost him last year. And we haven't seen the actual figures of what they signed him for, but it could be less than a million bucks for Jordan Matthews. So, you know, talk about a bargain basement, lame attempt to replace Brandon Cooks. I'm not sure that's going to be Brandon Cooks. He is a big, fast receiver, and I like him personally, but I'm, I'm not sure he's going to help very much. And now comes speculation from the inside that maybe Bill's going to trade his draft cash for a young quarterback, go up to the top five, maybe the top two, who knows, maybe even the top one to, to draft one of these quarterbacks to be the next Tom Brady. So once again, th there is underlying tension between these two that I don't like and I don't think is going to work for what's left of the Patriots because they've taken a lot of hits in free agency going forward. They are not what they were one year ago. Your thoughts? Okay, so that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> <laughs> we got a few things. Uh, so let's start with the Brandon Cooks trade. Great trade. They get a guy for a million and a half dollars. They trade away the 32nd pick in the draft. The next year, they turn that into the 23rd okay. pick in the draft. And now the Rams are paying eight and a half million dollars for, for Brandon Cooks. And they couldn't resign him anyways. They would have had to either franchise okay, him. Got so, it. So that's a big number guy. But, so, but he needs to be replaced. Go ahead. Okay, in terms of drafting a quarterback, they're not going to draft a quarterback in the first round. At least I can't imagine that's the way it's going to go. He's been a head coach for 23 years. He's never drafted a quarterback in the first round. He's only drafted one wide receiver in the first round. Mm -hmm. The Malcolm Butler issue, I don't know what happened there. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Odds are there was a very good reason that we don't know about and we'll never know about because that's the way things work. It, it's kept in-house. Did in it hurt the in defense? In terms of it being his defense, yeah. yeah, it's his defense, but it's Matt Patricia's defense, who's now the head coach. <laughs> of the Detroit Lions. So obviously he did enough good work to, to get that job. And the Eagles did a lot of good things in the playoff run, mm -hmm. and so did Nick Foles. That wasn't just unique to, to New England. Okay, the next thing was uh, replacing the receivers with Jordan Matthews. You, you forget now, there's also Kenny Britt, who's there. There's Cordero Patterson, who's there. They're getting Julian Edelman back. And what does Bill do consistently? He goes and gets guys, and when everybody else has run away from him, and then they go to New England, and they do a, a really good job. Because and suddenly, Because the quarterback is really good. But, but just the idea of saying it's a bargain basement, that doesn't mean it's bad. That actually just means it's really good business. Remember Randy Moss? Randy was Moss was a fourth-round draft pick that they traded, but he was coming off horrible season. Yes. Suddenly he goes there, and he becomes the Randy Moss mm -hmm. that we all knew, and arguably better than, than what we knew. And to me, this year's free agency period is more in line with the Patriots than what we saw last year. Last year was the aberration. This year is, is more consistent. They paid um, a ton of money for Stephon Gilmore. They paid yep. a ton of money yep. for him. They traded away the first-round draft pick for, for Cooks. Mm -hmm. Now this year, they've got two number ones and two number twos, which is something they haven't had in a long time. In so terms, you fully expect he'll just sit there or maybe even trade back to, to create more... Uh, typically, uh, you know, they may go get a left tackle in the first round or they could trade back, but they've got a lot of ammunition that they historically haven't had. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady's hand, it wasn't heart surgery. It was stitches on his hand. That it's was your throwing hand. It it's wasn't, your right hand. <laughs> but it wasn't heart did, did surgery. Did you see the pictures of it? I, I did. It, it looked yeah. really I mean, bad. Yeah, yes, factually, it was not heart surgery. Well, Coach, in, Bel in Coach the Belichick said he did it at a kitchen accident, so I wouldn't give you no credit. You didn't hear it on my watch. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever heard? of a quarterback handing the ball off, and he gets a, gets a laceration that requires 12 stitches in the base of his hand. Wait, are you you put quotes around 12 stitches, so you're saying that was I'm not saying, true? I'm not saying true? The, the, the 12. He didn't need 11. He didn't need 13. He got 12. But anyway, have you ever <laughs> known? I mean... Uh, typically, no, but I remember the night before the Super Bowl, we, had, we ran out of long snappers, and we brought in this guy who... It snapped for Bill in Cleveland, and he had been preaching. That's what he'd done for the last two years, but we needed someone. Right. So he comes in, and then the day, practice the day before this, we rolls it back. That night, he cuts his hand while he's eating a steak, and then he's got to snap the ball in the Super Bowl and, and for us to win, and he ends up doing it. So, look, these things happen. Higher degree of difficulty, snapping or throwing passes against well, the Well, I'm just saying when you're the long snapper and you've been out for two years and you slice your hand with a knife, 
and you've got to make the biggest snap of your mm. career. W with the hand, yeah, it was bad. But over the course of his career, Bill's seen a lot worse injuries that guys have played with. Yeah, and that was my point. And that's my point. And what e Man is saying is that he cut his hand cutting a stake, not snapping a football. Oh, that's what e Man oh. was trying to get at. You know what? You could be right. Maybe it didn't happen getting caught on Burkhead's helmet yes. in practice. Okay. Maybe it was something else, but it happened. it happened. It was gashed. This is how you grip the football. Did Tom Brady not say there was a night? What was it, Wednesday night going to Thursday? He wasn't sure he could even play oh, on Sunday. But, but, Skip, what should Bill have done? Create a sense of urgency in the press conference? Like, oh, my God, this injury's so G bad. Give him a little so, break? Give so him that, a little credit? So Maybe just a little bit? Feels... So he, he sounded like Shannon Sharp in the postgame, <laughs> trying, tr trying to discount what Tom no. Brady had done. Was Tom Brady not great in the fourth quarter against a really what good second? What Coach secondary? Belichick always does is that he doesn't give his team excuses if we were to lose well, we lost because of Tom's injury mm -hmm. like somebody else I know. Nobody gave it excuse. It's just what? It just was a thing. It happened. It happened. Yeah. yeah it was a dub. deep gap. That dub happened for old, old yeah. Foles. But, but Did I need an excuse after the game? Yeah. I didn't need an excuse. I, I think the other thing when you look at this whole free agency period and the, and the Patriots this offseason and the sense of alarm that everybody has, mm -hmm. remember last year when, when the question was, can they go undefeated this year? Yeah. Are they the most loaded they've ever been? All that, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Well, did they not win free agency last year? I, I mean, I, I guess so. Stefan Gilmore early in the season couldn't get lined up. Brandon Cooks had, you know, okay stats. Coney Ely didn't even play it down. Did cut they him. win free agency? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, hold on. You talk about they cut him. Mm -hmm. Guess who picked him up? The Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. He got it. So his third yeah. team. I guess Dallas is winning free yeah. agency this See, year. What happens, Eric? <laughs> My Cowboys, they wait until they can get a bargain basement deal. See, they bring in Coney Ely when he gets cut by Bill Belichick. How about his right? four team? Wouldn't this concern you a little bit, E-Man? You on your four team in a year? Yeah, that'd be a concern. And, and bargain <laughs> basement coming from the Patriots is different yeah, okay. than bargain basement coming from <laughs> I'm just from throwing your else. argument back at you. I mean, I mean, a guy, think about this, Skip. A guy that had three sacks, an interception, a forced fumble in the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl is on his fourth team since that Super Bowl. I loved him at Missouri. Maybe yeah. he... Maybe he's born to be a Dallas Cowboy. It's not, yeah. it's a, there's a lot of singers that have one hit one. Yeah. 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 That's a yeah. song that everybody can't Yeah, yeah. Rockwell <laughs> had one. Uh -huh. Feel like somebody watching me. Mm. Yeah, it's especially when I'm on this show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would hope that there's no. I'm talking about this one. Oh, you mean following yeah. you on Twitter? Oh, they be they be yeah. loving you. They love you, boy. I'm about to catch you. No mercy. Here's the latest on Dez Bryant. An anonymous Cowboys staff member told Sports Illustrated's Albert Breer that Dez quote does very few things really well. Breer added that Cowboys coaches started seeing Dez's physical gifts start to slip all the way back in 2015. Dallas assigned wide receivers Alan Hearns and Deontay Thompson this offseason, leading to even more speculation about Dez's future in Dallas. Shannon, what did you read into this? That staff have been reading my notes, Joy. Oh, they've yeah. been watching us. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Way to go. I mean, but he's saying this like, I mean, tell us something we can believe, Joy. Tell us that Warren Buffett as a child sold bean pies as a truck stop in Nebraska. Now, see, that might be something I find hard to believe. But telling me Jazz doesn't do very many things well, and he goes back to win, Skip, 2015. Who oh, been going back to 2015? I said, look at his numbers. After he got the money, he deserved that big payday in 2015, Skip. Because yeah. 2013 was as good as anybody that's ever worn that cowboy uniform and played receiver has yeah. ever had. He was special. Yeah. But go back, look, and come forward. Mm. Every DB that comes out here, they say the same thing, Skip. Now, they study tape. Now, you know I've studied tape a long time. Mm -hmm. But they watch him. Say, we play for end breaking routes, and we know he can't run by us, so they're going to try to back shoulders. Mm -hmm. Two routes. Okay. The only, but it doesn't matter, Skip. If you would, like you like to say, if you could put Jason Garrett, if yep. you could put Scott Lanahan on a lot of take the test and make them tell you the truth about Dez Bryant, mm -hmm. everybody knows what Dez is, but it don't matter. Only one person matters. Mm -hmm. That's Jerry. Skip, let me ask you a question. If Dez Bryant played for the Patriots and had three down years, you think he's still making that kind of money? Mm -hmm. If he played for any team that's serious about winning, and not just making headlines because, you know, we're going to be the highest rated team because we got that star. You're not having a guy with three down years mm -hmm. and you keep him at the same salary. Agreed. Yep. So this is all about Jerry and his, his love. And, and, and that's his baby. 
I mean, mm. you know, Dez is his guy, you know, Dez, Dez, Dez. But Skip, Dez is not that guy that he was. Mm -mm. And, and, and I believe he could, you know, go in and with this guru and go help him on some things. But Dez is what he is. Dez is what, he's it, what he is. Hmm. So, for the first time, I heard someone on the inside provide what became music to my ears because it's what we have been saying mm -hmm. all along since the debacle in Denver week two of the NFL season. Des Bryant is a shell of himself. And finally, somebody on the inside, I don't think it's Jason Garrett, but somebody in that coaching staff is seeing what we're seeing or not seeing. Mm -hmm. And the quote is, based on last year, he does very few, few things very well. Does very few things very well, really well. Okay, for a okay, receiver, so, Skip, what's, what's three of the things he needs to be able to do? He needs to be able to run. Can Dez run? run? Can he run the tree? Hides his hands. Okay, those are the three most important things for a receiver. He led the NFL in drops. He, he lacks quickness. He lacks acceleration speed, like yeah. fifth gear speed down the field. Mm -hmm. He can't run by anybody. He can't run away from anybody. He, his routes are simple to the point you can call them before the ball is snapped. Mm -hmm. So what? how are you going to get open? And yet, the more you are single covered, the more your young second-year quarterback who goes right by the book, he's a one, two, three reader, he's going to say, 88 singled. I, I, the read is, because the read's oh, yeah. always, it's to go to 88. Absolutely. Right? And then 88 either runs the wrong route, can't get open, or drops something that's in his ca catch radius. That right? is correct. That, that's horrendous. And to me, Des Bryant was at the vortex of the collapse of this team. Like, if I can heap the most blame, I heap it on 88. Maybe I'm being harshly unfair here. But when the whole offense is sort of geared to throwing it to 88, that's, that's the key play of the drive is on, on all the key conversion plays, the third and fives, third and sevens, you're going to go to 88 and he's not going to catch it. What do you think is going to happen over time? Yeah. You're going to lose, man. Gonna lo Skip, yeah. look, look at Okay, when Gronk goes out yeah. in the uh, AFC Championship game, Gronk is out, Edelman hadn't played all year. Who steps up? Danny Amendola. Okay, you lose Zeke. Your best player. Who the, okay, if you say Dak is, is your first or second best player, okay, the second or third best player got to step up. You tell me in the absence of Zeke, Dez Bryant stepped up. Yeah. You look at every other team when, when a star player on the offensive uh, skill position, mm -hmm. when one of those guys go down, yep. look at the guys that step up. Mm. In 2014, who was the most dominating Dallas Cowboy? Oh, I'm pretty sure it was 88. Yeah. Right? 88, 88 and uh, uh, DeMarco, DeMarco Murray, because you, Skip, here's the thing. You had to drop that eighth guy down yeah. because DeMarco Murray was running the ball down your throat. Okay, now Tony Romo's like, hey, y'all got one-on-one -on -one out there with Dez. I'm going to give him the rock. Yep. Jump balls. All those 50-50 balls, Dez was coming down with him because this was pre-injury. This was a young Dez. Mm -hmm. This was a hungry Dez. Now. On the play that I love to talk about, it was a catch. Dez did catch it. What happened? It was fourth and two. Right. The game's on the line, and what does Romo do? He just bombs it to Devs, right? Yeah. Just, just your basic fly pattern. You know, he's just running up the sideline, straight up. What you love most about it, Skip? Yeah. You love his effort. Yeah. Tell me you see that kind of effort from Dez Bryant since. Going up over a guy head. I, I saw a guy whose body has broken down and then who lost all confidence in himself. Mm -hmm. Yet, to your original point, the owner still sees him as box office. Yes. Because remember, following 2014, he wasn't just profiled by Sports Illustrated. He was on the cover of Rolling Stone. Mm -hmm. The cover, I mean, that's hard crossover, man. Yes. That's, that's where you have, you're touching all the bases, yes. man. If Rolling Stone says, we're going to put you, the primary candidate, a rock nation, I mean, a, a client of Rock Nation, mm -hmm. on the cover of our magazine, yeah. that's, that's impact, man. And Jerry Jones is going, wow. And listen, we used to do road shows with the ESPN show. Everywhere we went, the whole crowd's just, they're just doing this. Yeah. So he was huge. And then in tw I, I agree, in 2015, I'm like, where are you? What happened? And I wrote it off to this injury, that injury. But once you start having lower leg injuries at that position, as you know, you got that Liz Frank, the, it, the Jones fracture. But, you if got, you're not, but Skip, yeah. if you're not a speed guy to begin with, yeah. 
and you're not technically sound. He can still outrun Steve Largent, but Steve Largent caught 100 touchdowns because he was technically sound. He mm -hmm. understood how to run the route tree. Yep. But when you can't separate and you're only basically running two routes, it, maybe it's his fault, maybe it's the Cowboys because they don't ask him to do enough. Maybe they're afraid to ask him to do any more than what he's doing because they don't mm -hmm. feel he's capable of doing it. Yep. Whatever the case may be, he's not moving around. They can't mm -hmm. put him in the slot. They can't, mo they can't do a lot of different things. Whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, this is, this is my production. I, is he producing? Now, you can make all this. Jerry can love him as much as he want to. Mm -hmm. But guess what, Jerry? Love don't win you no titles. No. This is what I don't understand, Skip. This is what baffles me about Jerry. The man that released Emmitt Smith, who's the all-time leading rusher, who has the most rushing touchdown, a former MVP, a former Super Bowl MVP. Mm -hmm. He released Emmitt Smith. He did. But he a hold on and clutch Dez, who has never gotten him close to anything to resemble a title. No. That's what I don't get, Skip. Emmett Smith. Well, he thought Emmett was done, and Emmett looked done when he went to Arizona, but that's all another issue. But he doesn't think Dez, he thinks there's still firepower in that body. He's clinging to 2014, and you can't see it, and I can't see it. I don't think Dez Bryant is fixable because I think his body has just betrayed him. So I don't. You can hire all the Sanjay Lal's as receiver coach. I don't know who he is, but he's the new receiver coach. Like he's going. What was his quote about? Des and I can go places together. Yeah. What? Y'all go where? Y'all go. Y'all go. Y'all gonna go to the unemployment line. That's what y'all. That's what y'all about. Skip. Jerry with the Hubble telescope couldn't see what's inside Des that is fixable. Mm -mm. He is what he is. Skip. You don't have. What's the likelihood? You have three down years. You tell me the guy that's had three down years, and then the fourth year, there's an uptick that he goes mm -hmm. back to being what he was. Mm -hmm. You don't see that, Skip. Okay, so there was one other late line in this Albert Breer report about Dez. At the bottom of it, just out of nowhere, comes the Cowboys' failure to land Sammy Watkins, probably save Brian's place on the roster. And I had not... Silly me, I don't know. Maybe I missed it, but I didn't know they were pursuing Sammy Watkins. They were in the Derby. They mm -hmm. were in the auction. But Sammy Watkins got three years, 48, 48. million right. from Kansas City with like 30 million guaranteed. Right. And they weren't willing to go there. Well, it, it gives me hope and renewed heart that maybe Jerry is seeing what we're seeing and maybe he did go after Sammy Watkins and failed. Well, if he did, that means that, that he's done with Dez. But he's when? got who to replace Dez. He has nobody. I'm telling you, I just believe that they're going to try and box Dez in, Skip. Maybe. After the draft, yeah, free agency's right. done gone. Hey, this is what we got for you, Dez, or we're going to have to release you. Then what does he do? Mm. I don't know. I just, look, I like Dez personally, but I, I just don't want to see him around next year. I don't think, I think it will just gum up the works next year. Yeah. But if he's making less money, maybe they won't force it to him. Okay, but how happy will Des Bryant be making less money with no footballs thrown to him? Man, this is what I good luck with that. You know what? It <laughs> keeps people like, oh, Skip, if you're not gonna make plays mm -hmm. for twelve and a half million, yep. but you're gonna make them plays for three million, mm -hmm. four million, mm -hmm. you would think like, man, I'm jumping, I'm jumping out the stadium trying to catch the ball, but now you're making four million, man. I gotta really make this play now. We'll see. No mercy. Tim Tebow made a great debut in Double A baseball it is yesterday. Hard. It the is very hard. first it pitch of his very first at bat with the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. <laughs> Tebow went yard, launching a majestic shot over the right field wall. It was a three-run homer, Whoa. and the Rumble Ponies Did win. Did you see that, Shannon? Wow, Shannon. Whoa. You all right? You okay? Going, going, wait, gone. Welcome, you, Rob wait, Parker. What's morning. happening? Good morning. Bingham. Binghampton <laughs> Rumble, Rumble Ponies. It's a good name. Double A mm -hmm. Professional Baseball League. Go ahead, Professional. Rob, yeah. Yeah. Rob oh, how yes. impressive was this? Uh, no, anytime you get a home run, we always talk about it. The hardest thing to do in sports is to hit a baseball. So, so To hit a baseball consistently. No, absolutely. <laughs> it is. It's very hard. Mm -hmm. That was a, a majestic shot. I give him credit. That Here's the thing, Skip, that's going to be different for you. You ready? Yeah. Tim Tebow actually, right, if he can have success, you know all the good players in baseball are where? In double A. They are. This is where, it's not the old days where triple A was the top mm -hmm. place. 
all the real players that move on to the major league are double A players. Mm -hmm. So if he can somehow, some way, play consistently, and and it's not the strikeouts before he struck out a lot. He struck out basically. He's played 126 minor league games. Mm -hmm. He struck out 126 times. Yeah. That's not good enough. But if you can have what Aaron Judge did, and I'm not saying 50 home runs, but hit enough home runs and have a high enough batting average, they don't look down on you like they used to. Before, he would never make the major leagues or never have a chance to make the major leagues. Do I think he's going to make the major leagues? No, no way, way, no, no how. how. I don't. <laughs> but if he had any shot at making it, he'd have to hit home runs What'd you just say? Consistent? Yes. Mm -hmm. Consistently on the double-A mm -hmm. level for people to finally... Because to me, Skip, this is his last year of really playing. I would agree. If he goes to double-A and we got 230 yeah. and you're striking out two times a game mm -hmm. and, you, and, you, and you hit four home runs or five home runs, there's no reason to continue. And here's the other kicker. The Mets aren't a dish rag anymore. They're a good team that most people have going, getting a wild card mm -hmm. and making the playoffs. Yep. So there's no reason to bring them in to try to sell tickets at the end of the year. The They're going to want somebody who can contribute because they have a playoff contending you team. You need a little September pop? Right, exactly, coming bench. off the bench. I don't know. Interesting. So are huh. you shocked that I gave you that? I'm, I'm a little surprised. The first, the it was first objective. Of all. Flu season is past. The only <laughs> shot Tim Tebow is going to get is a flu shot. Mm. We've seen this before, Skip. What happened in spring training? Can you tell the people that doesn't follow uh, baseball that closely, what was Tim Tebow hitting in spring training? Tell them what your researcher told you. I don't you. know. But I, he was busy. <laughs> I gave my research off. His wife's no, birthday was the other day. I gave him true. time off. That is not true. In spring training, Tim Tebow was hitting 056. He was one for 18 with 11 strikeouts. Mm. But let me tell you what he did that, last year. That ain't going to get you to the big league. Let me tell you what he did last year for the Columbia Fireflies. Mm. In his very first at back, can you guess what happened, Rob? He had a home run. What? And over the next 25, and next 125 games, he had seven more total with all those strikeouts. Mm. Pop. Mm. Whatever. Mm. You know it, Skip Bait. This is, I can't even, you know what, Skip Bait. You this has got you. Because you, you're, you're starting to get scared over there. Scared of Your what? Your seat's getting a little hot. Because what? He strikes out more than he makes contact with the ball? The mere fact that they still, they're, they're doing everything. They, they, they've cleared, mm. like you like to say, this is Skip Bayless' favorite term. Mm -hmm. They've cleared the deck for him. Mm. They're doing everything they can to get him up there. Mm. He just can't. He mm. can't do it. Yeah, they can't. Wait, Rob, now you're flipping around. No, I'm just stuff. saying, unless, Skip, he can show you, yep. he can hit some home runs on double A against the best talent. So, Tim Tebow, in his first appearance in low A ball a year ago, he hits home run. And in his first appearance as he got promoted to double A, I mean, to high A ball, he hit a home run. Yeah. And then his first at bat in double A, he hit a home run. And it wasn't just a home run. It was a shot. It was like what Joy and I saw in that audition mm. day at Joy, USC. Joy, Joy, start the oh. oh, showcase. Uh, it was a showcase, and he was just ripping shots, pull shots over the scoreboard of the is it Rod Dedo Stadium, I think, at USC. They were moon shots, and this was this wasn't the Oppo Jack. This this was a ball that he pulled. Now I didn't see a lot of pulled shots. You on moon rock? He you got, think you gonna make he the got a round on that pitch, and obviously that was the Portland Sea Dogs. Opening day starter, am I right? Man, look at this these names. Double A. The Portland Sea Dogs playing the Rumble Pony. Uh, yeah, look him up, Teddy Stankowitz. He was a second round draft pick, okay, for the Boston Red Sox. So again, you're, you're up against their opening day starter, and boom, you pull it. And what did Tim Tebow do during the off season? He worked, man. He, it's one, you got to give him that. He will work. He is dedicated to the task at hand because, remember, he went 12 years without playing baseball. It is the hardest game to figure out, to learn. It takes years to learn. That's why the, a lot of kids don't even want to take Try. the path. It's right. too hard. And, and, Skip, you know this. You fail seven times out of ten. You're you a Hall do. of fam Famer. Yep. That's how hard the game is. So yep. what happens if you fail one? Uh, nine uh, out times out of, out of ten. You don't make the major Oh, games. okay. So there we have it. But Sandy Alderson is seeing what we always saw in the sport of football. All he does is win. No, he doesn't. Video no, he doesn't. that we did. All, all he, he does, does is win. strike out. All he does is win. All didn't he, he does win, is strike out. Did he win an award for that yeah, video? It, I didn't, but it did. Yeah, it no. did. The video won an award. What about what? You won't see the. 
If they put together, what, like 10 home runs? Yeah. I bet I can put together a video, a, a, a montage of all them strikeouts. He got so, 10 times the strikeouts. Sandy Alderson, the GM of the Mets, who's been around for a couple of days, hadn't he? He's been all over the place, been with the A's in their glory years. And he said before spring training started, I think he'll play in the major leagues, said Sandy Alderson of Tim Tebow. That's my guess. That's my hope. And to some extent now, after a year and a half, a modest expectation. So he was trying to sort of But what Sandy left out in that quote is that he'll probably have a cup of coffee and a sweet roll Mm. if he gets there. It won't be that long. Yeah, and he said this experiment is not going to last forever, but he has made meaningful progress. Again, hadn't played for 12 years. Which is the hardest game to play. Uh, And all of a sudden, you just step in against all those bonus babies, and you start in the Arizona Fall League. It is loaded with top prospects. That didn't know what Rob said. Rob said the top prospects in double-A. No, No, but but I mean, they they go to the Arizona Fall League before they go to double-A. But double-A is where, and that's why I'm saying, when he says this experiment won't last forever, if he strikes out and and bats Mm -hmm. 110 in double-A, he will not make it to the major Mm -hmm. leagues, and he won't be in the minor leagues next year. Joy, this is it. I'm not in chemistry. I'm not in science class. Mm -hmm. What are we doing experiments for? Mm -hmm. Oh, this experiment. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. But you're betting on intangibles because you saw what he did in Denver as a football quarterback. No, I ain't betting on intangibles. I'm betting on talent. I want to bet on something. Mm -hmm. Look at So what what did Tim Tebow do in this offseason? He dropped, I don't know, know, he said 12 pounds. It looks like he's dropped about 15 pounds because he was a little thick last year. He's a little muscle bound, a little too top heavy maybe. And so he looks thinner, sleeker, lighter, faster. What you need to be. You need a little more bat speed. And I saw bat speed on that pitch. He got around on it, and he has got raw power. He's born with power. We know that. I got that right now and not one over the fence. Yeah. Right now. Have you ever hit a home run? What kind of question is that? No, I'm serious. Of course I have. Skip, did you hit home runs? Hmm? No. Nope. When did you, I, I when never did you... hit one. Not in, not, I'm set, like Rob. over the fence. I've run out of home Whipple runs. Wiffle ball doesn't count, Shannon. Rob. I'm talking about have you ever hit Rob. one out of the park? Rob, you like 59 <laughs> and you 116 pounds. Stop so it. So can you imagine when you were a teenager how much you weighed? 83 pounds. No 83 pound guys. You think I'm 59? I look good. I'm not 59. You're close. Mm. You're close. No. no. Oh, okay. No. You're saying that Rob I'm Parker is 10 years older than you, Shannon? I'm still in my 40s. I'm not even that right. He makes it like I'm that I'm that much older than you. You I'm are not. that much. I'm not. So you at least seven. I'm going to say what I'm I've not. said You're from the start. I'm 50 years old, right? I'm 49. Okay, and I'm 54. Okay, there you go. We're, no, we're the not. same. So, Here's the point. I'm going to say what I said from the start. This is a long shot, but this is the one guy you've got to give a shot to because you don't bet against this guy. When he puts his mind to something... Hey, I'm just going to hold you, Skip, yes or no. Yes or no. Does he make it to the major league? Yep. Okay. I just got a feeling they're going to no. give him a shot. Hold on, Rob. And it's going to be the, it's, it, it's going to have to be this year because I think this is going to be this the end of the line. Hold on. You make it seem like Tim Tebow is the only guy that's put his mind to something. There are a lot of major... Sure. There are a lot of guys sure. that were in double-A, single-A. Yeah, but sometimes you just got to have that magic, you know? Nope. I, I view him as a as a battery guy. Mm-hmm. Double A, triple A, and single A. That's how he's going. Double A is a lot of battery. Yeah, no, yes, it, it ain't the majors. Mm-hmm. No, I think oh. he's more like nine volt. It, it's gonna it's gonna hurt you if he makes a majors. Oh. Oh. Major. You might you might, that would, that, you might call him to work. I mean, that ain't nothing. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Keep an eye out for a weekend edition of the podcast tomorrow morning, featuring the best discussions and segments from this week. We'll be back with more Undisputed on Monday morning at the same time, 930 Eastern. Have a great weekend, everyone. Fox Sports. One of one.